Well, you guys, I have three rather large things of tomatoes that I need to get through the strainer because today we are going to make some tomato juice and some uh, Bloody Mary mix. That's what we're going to do. Uh, these are from the 90 some pounds of tomatoes that were still in my freezer. If you might recall from my freezer tour. Um, so I have uh, cooked them down so they're all nice and soft and they're all cold now. They've just been sitting in the garage for a day or so and um, just gonna run them through the strainer. I'm not gonna show you that whole thing because you've seen me do it a hundred times. I'll, I'll show you a little bit. But we'll come back once I'm ready to actually start making the Bloody Mary mix and getting it canned up. I'm gonna get a bigger bowl than this. I'm gonna heat it. Since we will need to heat this back up again, I need to get at least one of these pots emptied into here so I can put it in here and start heating it up. Well, I was all ready to start putting the tomato juice into the jars to go into the canner, and then I just realized I actually forgot the beets. I'm not sure why, but this recipe calls for beets. Um, and I'm just using the um, Ball New Book of Preserving, and yeah, it says 14 pounds of tomatoes, one large red beet, peeled and cut into quarter inch cubes. It was also supposed to go through the food mill, however, so instead, I'm just going to go ahead and peel it now, wash them and peel them, cut them up, put them in a saucepan and with a little bit of water and just boil them until they're soft. And then I'll just press them through a fine mesh sieve. And I think that should be good enough, hopefully. I have three kind of medium sized beets and I have two, um, this is, I'm making a double batch of this, so that should be perfect. But okay, we need to. <laughs> peel and boil some beets now. <laughs> so I actually was just reading a little bit further and in the recipe, actually at the top of the recipe, it says that um, the beet adds sweetness and great color. I thought it must have something to do with color. A little wash here and then we will get them peeled. beets this way. I've always put them in boiling water until they were soft and the skins kind of just slip off that way. Kind of. Not always. But I think that's because I've always been doing huge batches of pickled beets and that's just a quick easy way to do it. A quicker way than peeling them all by hand. I am going to have to figure out which of my pots has more tomato juice in it because I don't think it has equal amounts. Well, actually, they look like they might because the one is tall and narrow and the other is wider and shorter, so I bet they do have about the same amount. Okay. cut this on my cutting board but this would completely stain it so I'm going to just cut it by hand stain my hands instead <laughs> all right just 
just gonna put a little bit of water in them and put them on foil. So while we are waiting for those beets, I am going to make a small batch of the Bloody Mary recipe that they have in here as well. And it calls for a half a cup of finely minced celery hearts. Well, I guess I could, yeah, these are kind of rubbery anyway, so I'll just peel these off and use the center of that. Um, anyway, so it's it just uses two quarts. So I think I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do a half recipe, so I'm gonna do four cups. So I'll need a quarter cup of celery. <laughs> But I figure I might as well get this going as well, since I have to wait for the beets. All right. It says to include the green leafy bits, so. So you aren't supposed to strain this, so I'm gonna put these really super fine. imagine they'll mostly turn to mush anyway with the canning process, but I'd rather not have a big chunk of celery, mushy celery in my Bloody Mary mix. And the whole reason for this is that we're not, we don't like drink tomato juice just plain, but we do love a thing called a Caesar, which is basically a Bloody Mary but it all has the addition of clam nectar, clam juice in it. And I know that sounds completely disgusting, but, <laughs> and I thought so too when I first heard about it, but I have come to greatly enjoy them. So uh, that's why we are making tomato juice. Of course, <coughs> I can't can something that has uh, clam nectar in it. At least I don't think so. I've never seen a recipe that said I could do that. Um, so we're just canning tomato juice and then when we wanna make the um, Caesars, we'll make the Clamato, that's what the tomato juice with clam sauce in it is called. Um, we'll just make it with the tomato juice. Um, so we need a teaspoon garlic powder and a half teaspoon of celery seed thought I needed onion but I don't um, and a half teaspoon of smoked paprika. And then we need an eighth of a cup of prepared horseradish, three tablespoons of dill pickle juice, three tablespoons of Worcestershire, and a tablespoon of hot sauce. I might not do an entire tablespoon because my dill pickle juice ha is spicy because it has a bunch of, um, uh, had a jalapenos in it, so it's pretty spicy. So I'm just gonna do maybe half a tablespoon of hot sauce. This actually sounds quite tasty, having the dill pickle juice in there. I would never have thought of that. I'm not actually sure how long beets take to go. Oh, no, then longer than this. <laughs> Still hard. All right, where were we? Uh, we need the prepared horseradish, 
and salt. And I think that's it. I really want to grow horseradish next year. So I have my own, uh, where's the salt? A teaspoon. All right, and then we just need four cups of tomato juice. Actually, you know what? It does say tomato juice from this recipe, and that has the beets and the salt and citric acid in it. So I'm gonna have to wait before I scoop that out. But I can put all of this stuff away now. Holy cow, these beets took forever, forever. Um, okay, I'm gonna strain out most of the liquid here and then yeah, so I'm just gonna press them through the sieve and whatever pulp I get out is what we'll put in with our tomatoes. All right, let's see how this goes. <laughs> Not having a lot of faith at the moment here. Yeah, because they're still pretty hard. Um, you know what, I should probably put them in the blender. All right, I'm gonna put them in the blender and then we'll try this again. All right, that's working much better. Oh, no, don't stain my board. I discovered that this worked a little bit better. And we got it all through fairly <laughs> easily. <laughs> and now my thing is stained, but that's all right. Next time I will read my directions more thoroughly before I start doing things. I always say that to myself and then I never do. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to split this between these two pots over here. And then we will add our citric acid to both of them. So we need two teaspoons in each. And this is just like with any tomato recipe uh, that you're going to can. You just need to add a little bit of extra acid to make it safe. You could also use, this is, this little short thing is not going to work. <laughs> you could also use um, bottled lemon juice if you wanted to. But I find that I feel like citric acid, citric acid is just easier. Oh, look at that. It does make a nice color. Much more like the red that you see of tomato juice in the store. Huh. They must add um, colorings. I bet they do. Never really looked at tomato juice because we don't ever drink it. <laughs> All right, so now that we have everything in here, let me just make sure. Mm -hmm. Cover, cook over medium heat, stirring off until the thermometer registers 190. Oh, and we also need to add a tablespoon of salt. I don't know if you can really tell from over there, so let me bring you a little closer but it definitely made it like a really nice deep red. It was much more orange before I put the beets in there. You can tell a little bit more on this one because it's still a little more orange than red. Like I said, I think there must have been more tomato sauce in here, or tomato juice. All right, so I'm going to take 
two cups from this one and two cups from this one for our um, uh, Bloody Mary mix. That should not take any time at all. Um, but our jars are all ready to go. They've been sitting in the canner being hot in hot water. So, and this, the tomato sauce is definitely more than hot enough. So let's get our first five jars um, in, in jars, because <laughs> that's what I can fit in this canner. And we are water bath canning, and um, uh, you're supposed to process for 40 minutes for quart jars, which is what we're doing. Um, so I will need to add 10 minutes for that for our elevation. So we will be doing 50 minutes. All right, we are gonna start with this guy. don't use quart jars very often because it's just the two of us, but if we are making mixed drinks with this, a pint would not go very far. So I actually get to use some of my quart jars for once. I'm sure I'm going to have to do multiple loads of this and this is definitely going to need more water. And for now, let's just get this going. I'm a little closer, I'm gonna make a mess. So we wanna leave a one inch headspace for these guys. is yep right where the lines start at the top of the jar Grab a little more from the other pot. I'm just going to double check my head spaces here. I'm not concerned about debubbling because these are, this is so liquidy. Perfect. All right. Just going to get a paper towel to wipe the rims. And then we'll get the lids on. Always want to make sure you have nice clean rims so your seal is not affected. Finger tight. I could have sworn that you're able to do quartz. Oh my goodness, sorry. Madeline is losing her mind. Madeline! Okay. I could have sworn that you could do quartz. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Just a minute. I could have sworn you could water bath quartz in this, but it is not looking like it. Um, water bath, where would it say this? Maybe you actually can't, you can pressure can quartz, but you can't water bath can. So this means, yep, no, can't do quartz, dang it. All right, well, I was being lazy and didn't want to go downstairs and get my big canner, and now I'm gonna have to. <laughs> ah, okay, we'll be back. 
I can, however, fit more canners in my big water bath canner. So I'm gonna fill up two more jars that can go in there. And I refilled this with water because um, well, I'll still, I can do my pints that I have um, for the Bloody Mary mix because that can't be canned in quarts. That can go in there. So it's not a loss. It's not all a loss. I imagine there was at least one person that was like, you realize you're not going to be able to can quartz in your countertop canner, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> not until it's too late. Oh, dear. Well, this is what happens in a real kitchen. All right. Lids. All right, get these two guys in there and get that one going. In the meantime, our Bloody Mary mix is done simmering. So I do want to give it a little taste and see what we think. Maybe we'll make more of it. Oh, that's good. Mmm. I might have to make more of this. Wow. Uh, yeah, well, let's fill up the jars that I do have with this and go from there. Probably I'm only going to get two cups, but... Or two jars, rather. Let's try to not make a mess. Ooh. Yep, we're gonna make a mess. I'm guessing it's one inch, but I will go check before I put lids on here. Oh, just a little less. We are definitely gonna make another batch of this. Let me check for headspace on these guys. Oh, actually, they only need a half inch headspace. All right. So I'm just going to put these in this canner, um, which is nice and hot, so it'll keep them nice and warm while we whip up another batch of this. I'm kind of excited for this now. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my last three quart jars that I have. Hopefully I have just enough for three, but I have a couple more pint jars in here, nice and hot. And even though my canner it still has a ways to go. Um, I'm just going to put them in my oven on the keep warm setting until the canner is freed up and I can put them in there. In the meantime, I have now four pints of the um, Bloody Mary sauce, or Bloody Mary mix, which tastes amazing. I foresee Bloody Marys in our weekend plans. Oh, look at that. Just a tiny bit left. And these could use a tiny bit more. Oh, perfect. Like, not even a quarter cup left. Actually, both of these could use a tiny bit more. I believe. Yep. And then all I have left is just a half jar of the Bloody Mary mix. So 
So I could put these in this canner, these pints, but the Bloody Mary mix only has to process for 45 minutes. And um, since the these guys have to process for 50 minutes, I, I'm, not, I'm just gonna do these three by themselves. And since I'm not pressure canning, it doesn't matter if I have a full load or not. Like I said, I'm just gonna have my oven on keep warm and uh, I'll just put these in there and that should work perfectly and it sounds like my canner is boiling. So, Alexa, set a timer for 50 minutes. I do need to add a little bit of water to this one because it's not quite, it's not even quite an inch over. You might notice I have an empty jar in here and that's just so they don't um, kind of crash around on each other since there's not a, uh, a rack that actually holds them still like there it is in my big canner. All right, I'm just gonna put this guy on and start her off. And again, once this comes to a boil, I will set another timer for 45 minutes. It is the next morning. It was very late by the time we got finished with these. <laughs> I, I really need to learn to start starting my projects a little bit earlier, but they came out beautifully. Um, only a couple of them separated even a tiny little bit and actually I guess it was probably, it was this one. You can just barely see that it was kind of separated at the bottom. I shook it up and, and it stayed since then. So just going to get the rings off of these so they can get stored. And of course, make sure all the seals are good. And then you're just gonna go downstairs and we will have tomato juice, I think easily for the year. <laughs> I do still need to figure out what to do with the other 60-ish pounds of tomatoes that I have left. If you have any ideas, please let me know. I know I've already asked this, but yeah. Um, I have thought about doing a chili base, um, and I, I don't know. I might actually do some more marinara sauce because we are going through that a little bit faster than I expected. Um, so I might do another batch of that just so we definitely have enough for the year. But other than that, I need some other things to do. So I did just, oh, I wanted to show you too the difference. Um, so this one was the one that we, um, put the celery hearts in and you can see that it's definitely it's, it's pretty chunky it's a little more chunky than I think I like whereas this one we did not put the celery in it and it's more it's more tomato juicy so I think in the future I definitely will make this again because it's really really good um, I will not do the celery hearts and the flavor wasn't any different, not really, maybe a tad more celery flavor, but I could put some more celery seeds in this one and have the same basic thing. So um, that would be the only thing I would change about the Bloody Mary sauce, um, but I'm super excited with how well that came out as well. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed making some tomato juice and some Bloody Mary mix with me. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Love to see you back. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye.